Okay, Casper. So we're here at uh, the We Share Fest in in in, uh, in Paris. We already uh, had a nice conversation uh, about uh, six months ago uh, in in es Estonia, the, the country yeah. where you're from. Yeah. Uh, you're the project leader of the e-resident project. Uh, for people who don't know what it is, uh, what is it? <laughs> it's the uh, first time when government offers you digital identity, so that every person can become an e-Estonian and have this digital name on the internet. And using that name, you have this private key, smart ID card, which you can start entering to different services. You can start using different services with e -resident. Okay, and, 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 and some more concrete, what kind of different service can, can the, you then... Uh... The, the main service has been the business environment. Uh, so e residents uh, establish companies using that card, establish bank accounts, get access to financial tools like payment providers, uh, crowdfunding markets and uh, have this location independent business environment. So you can work wherever you are, you can travel all around the world, you have this e-residency card and this magically enables you to run your company. So, and, and most of these innovations, we, uh, uh, they're from the US, you're from, from Estonia, so, so how, yeah, uh, what's the history of the, of the, of the e-residence? Yeah, e-residence history goes back actually to 2002 with each Estonian got its digital name. So my name is 387-1201-2796. Sounds really personal. <laughs> <laughs> That's, and I think it's very beautiful. <laughs> and, and that name uh, opens me some doors on internet. I can use my name Casper on physical life. I can go and buy liquor from the shop or I can travel. But if I have digital name, it opens different doors. And in Estonia, for example, I'm, all, I'm traveling all around the world all the time. So I'm still voting using that name on my local elections. I can establish company within 20 minutes. I have e-prescription, so if I fall ill, I just call my doctor and I can go to pharmacy and take my medicine. I digital sign all the contracts with my employees, so my life continues even if I'm not there in Estonia physically. Yeah, so, so uh, it's your digital identity and from there you can enter every information data you want. Exactly, and this we just now opened these gates for foreigners so that everybody can have that digital identity. And uh, that's why the EU business environment has been very hot because Estonia is a very hassle-free environment. Uh, it takes minutes to establish, to declare taxes, everything is very smooth. Yeah, so, so then, um, so, so uh, uh, first uh, let's go back to, uh, to, my, uh, to the moment that you say, okay, uh, uh, we have this, this, this user interface for our country. It yeah. works really well for, for people who are, who are in our country. So take me back uh, to the moment that you say, okay, let's do an experiment and get it open for everybody in, in the world. So yeah, the experiment started like any startups usually, but this time a government startup that uh, I just launched a launch page. You can subscribe yourself to become an e-resident of Estonia. And next day when I woke up and I checked Google Analytics, then we had over 4,000 subscribers from 150 different countries. Everybody wanted to become e-resident. So for me, that was like first shock. Like, like, And uh, I asked them what were the reasons and then they told the business they wanted to be part of the business environment. And then we started to change the laws to actually start issuing EU residency. And now we are changing laws to make the business environment very convenient. For example, from July 2016, after four months, you can est establish bank account also online without the need to travel to Estonia. So then it's fully location dependent. And we are developing that together with the government. We have full support with the government of Estonia. And uh, whatever EU residents tell us to do, we will make it happen. Kind of. Yeah, and it sounds really easy, but I, I guess uh, the process <laughs> was, was not easy as you, as you tell us. So, so in the end, so you say, okay, uh, so we create a, pay, a page uh, on, on, uh, on LoungeRock, we kind of manage uh, subscribers, we started, yeah. then we had to change the law. And what way do you, because yes, there are many corporates who are busy with government, uh, uh, with corporate incubators. Yeah. There are, I think, hardly any governments with a government incubator. So at what way uh, do you um, yeah, make the right balance between the speed, but also the responsibility we have from the government? It's a great question. The, the good thing is that uh, e-residency, in that sense, the technology, it's 15 years old already. Estonians have been developed that. The public key infrastructure, the smart card, the RSA 248 uh, encryption. So in that sense, this is there and the infrastructure is there. So it's very easy now to start scaling it and add new services. So we don't need to balance about uh, security or privacy. We can just start adding services what e residents need. Yeah. And that's why it's very scalable. So you really uh, uh, started with a really uh, uh, proven product. And yeah. that's okay, with this proven product, we're going to... Uh, because, uh, but what kind of ambitions do you have when you started with it? Did you have any idea? Well, the, 
within the, the idea who is the customer, who is the Euros and exactly, we of course knew that there are Estonian companies who have shareholders who are not Estonian. So it makes sense for them to become part of the digital society. They can digitally sign contracts and everything. But of course, we didn't know about what are the challenges internationally, what we can solve. And the main challenge what we can solve is financial and uh, technological inclusion. Like uh, today, 73% of people internationally are excluded from financial tools, from bank accounts, payment providers, crowdfunding sites, everything. And uh, because in their countries, they don't have PayPal, they don't have Stripe, crowdfunding. But through e-residency, we give them the digital name, we say that you are you who you claim to be on internet. And that's why now service providers can start offering you those services. Yeah. And this is what we didn't really know beforehand, that the challenges internationally are so huge mm -hmm. for startups, financial providers to offer their services everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And, and, and uh, by the way, I also have my resident app, oh. so it's, uh, I haven't used it uh, yet, but, uh, <laughs> but I think well, one of the first I'll still was because I, I had to pick up my card at the MC in, in The Hague. Yeah. And it took me about three months because I, I never in uh, in The Hague. So, so at what way are you going to, to remove these, uh, these barriers? This is a great question. Uh, we definitely don't remove face-to-face -face meetings because this face-to-face -face meeting is necessary in order for you to start, I don't know, opening bank accounts online because then at least once someone has checked who you are physically. However, we are going to extend the face-to-face -face locations where you can do that. Today there are 39 foreign embassies where you can do that. We are going to open over 200 locations within a few years time altogether and first new locations coming out end of this year. So eventually we are in basically in every city and uh, that would make it very convenient for people internationally to be part of that digital society. Yeah, and you said, okay, uh, we're, we're now uh, providing people with a platform and they can add also their services on it. Yes. Um, so um, when you look at uh, the sharing economy, we're talking a lot about sharing economy over here at the WeShare Fest. One of the, I think, biggest issues is, is online reputation and, and, and rating, but also your, yeah, not having an online identity. And what way can other people uh, implement new, uh, new tools uh, on the Estonia platform for these kind of purposes? The very easy, easy case would be that uh, we have APIs for authentication and APIs for digital signing, for example. But there would be startup who would integrate e-residency for online profile page so that I would have my own online profile page packed up by a government which, I, which proves who I am on internet. But actually we are making the whole government as a service and this is totally new thing that government as a service and uh, we have many new APIs that actually we hope private sector today. For example the coolest API is uh, incorporation API so that you can actually make establishment of Estonian company inside of your startup <laughs> and, uh, and then it's established in Estonia. And the purpose is that we understand as a government we are not so agile and so fast as private sector and we just give all the tools to private sector to do the yeah. services. Yeah, and about trust uh, uh, in your own government because people they are getting much more aware about okay I'm going to give someone my data uh, but what will happen with it? And, and what way do you uh, work on the trust that people also know that their data is trusted yeah. at your government? And that's the best part because we don't need to trust any people. We don't need to trust government. We just need to trust mathematics and encryption because everything is encrypted. It's packed, uh, some, some things back, packed on blockchain. You can check who has accessed your data if they had right to do that. If they didn't have right, then it's law case. So if everything is paper based, then I don't have any control. Who has my data, who accessed, who sees, who has copies. If everything is digitally encrypted on blockchain, on internet, then I can trace, I can track and everything leaves digital footprint. And that's why people trust it. And no one can access my data because I have my private key in my pocket and it needs pin code. So even if someone steals my private key, you need, uh, you need my card. If someone steals my card, you need my private key. If someone steals both of them for some reason, I can just close my certificate. You don't have any access. Yeah. That's why the trust system has been built up and people really trust it. Yeah. Uh, Estonian president used to say uh, the phrase that uh, you can't bribe the computer. So that's the thing. Uh, you can't trust computers and machines and um, yeah. that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And uh, one of the uh, challenges also uh, uh, when talking about platforms is also a critical mass. So how many users do you now, or how many e-residents do you now have? Just uh, two days ago, uh, we had 10,000 e-residents. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. And, uh, and uh, they are running already over 1,000 companies in Estonia. So they're establishing more and more companies and that's very hot. 
especially after we change the banking law mm -hmm. so that you can open bank accounts online because all of those people at the moment still need to travel to Estonia for business. After we change that regulation, then basically it starts booming. Yeah. And, 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 and talking about user cases, so, so, so what are the one or two user cases where you think, okay, I'm really proud of it, but it's also really a, a good example of what people can do with a e-residence? Yeah. Well, number one case is that if you want to sell something on internet and you're from emerging markets, then today you can't do that. You can't accept foreign currencies uh, like dollars, yens, etc. Becoming EU resident, having EU entity, EU bank account gives you access to those financial tools and now you can do internet business. That's number one use case. Uh, other use cases uh, are, we have lots of fans and uh, early adapters of EU residents and uh, we have, there is for example a forum, EUS network, where EU residents can uh, chat with each other and uh, help us to improve the services. And this is becoming very popular that actually EU residents telling us what they want and uh, collaborating all together. So this, yeah. is, this is very popular. Yeah. Cool. So it still sounds really, 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 let's say in 10 years, because uh, like I already said, okay, when you're talking about governments, you, you never expect uh, them to really to, 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 to act like a startup. So, so what do you think are the, like uh, uh, when people are, are working for governments? So what are your key principles for your success of, 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 of being able to act like you're doing? I guess in Estonia it's a bit, it goes way back when we got independent 1991, re-independence. Uh, then uh, we had managed to build everything from scratch and that enabled us to do it correctly and do it right. And, uh, and since then, uh, technology has becoming like a religion in Estonia. Like people started to believe in that so much because it really helped the society. And now it's like part of our culture, part of our religion. If you say like the first sentence, what the Estonians say, if someone asks where you're from Estonia, what's, what's Estonia? Then first sentence reaction usually it's, oh, where Skype was written or where e residents. The first reaction is about technology always. Yeah. And that is like defined in our nation state already that we are technology because we are pretty good in that. We have huge base of startups, the most startups per capita and the uh, e-governance systems and e-residences really make Estonians proud about that thing. And yeah. it, it really pushes forward all the time and you yeah. don't want to become the second best. So you, you push it quite, quite much. Yeah, yeah. But how do you manage, uh, so, 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 so what can governments lear learn from the processes about how uh, you make the right balance between <laughs> speed and also being a, a responsible government? Well, I guess, uh, I guess, um, I think everybody is responsible government. That's not an issue. <laughs> the only issue is to be have a speed there. And how do you make them speed? Is Our example is that we have dedicated team, we have dedicated budget. We can do things what we want to do. We don't have to like get acceptance in like seven different levels. We decide, we make it action. And then we have government support. Uh, we have board, where is prime minister also, and uh, we can actually make decisions fast and make them into parliament also. So it's like uh, we need more those kind of dedicated projects because usually the life is so complex that, for example, EU residency involves minister of finance, minister of internal affairs, uh, external affairs, justice, economics affairs. If you have like seven different ministries working together to have one application there, then usually it's just stuck there because different ministers have different priorities. If you have dedicated team and it's, this gets priority, then it just will push to all the ministers that we need to make that happen. Yeah. So the way of governance need to be restructured in governments yeah. uh, as today. Yeah. And uh, you already made a really good first, first of, of, uh, of April full uh, <laughs> joke. I think yeah. I, I saw at first of April many jokes where I think, okay, it isn't a joke, it's, it's, it's just a, a wish or a, or a prediction for the future. Uh, so so, what, so uh, what was your joke? A country as a service. Uh, it was actually done by a private sector. Uh, and uh, the concept was that you can launch your country within minutes, just <laughs> upload your uh, ministries and government and if you have foreign debt, then you can pay them using transferwise <laughs> because it's cheaper. And for us, it was a huge like joke, and we actually didn't think that no one think it's a serious <laughs> thing. But now it turns out many people thought that this is reality, and that really pushed us to think how to make that happen. And this is like usually visions also happen. You make up some crazy thing, and then you realize that fuck, we could actually make that happen. Yeah, yeah. And uh, 
and they're working on that also. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it's, uh, would be, be, be brilliant also to share your user interface with other countries. Maybe also make it open source. That's yeah, an idea. definitely. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so I wish you all the best. Thank you. And thanks and talk to you uh, next time somewhere in the world. <laughs>